The Turtle Conservancy here in Southern California is one of the premier facilities for breeding critically endangered turtles and tortoises of the world. And thanks to their programs, the foundation for providing insurance colonies all across the globe is stronger than ever. After learning more about this on today's episode of Camp Kennan, I ask that you please go to turtleconservancy.org and check out their other programs and do what you can to help support them and their important mission. Here at the Turtle Conservancy with Director Paul Gibbons and today he's going to bring us inside the large greenhouse here where they house some of the rarest aquatic turtle species on earth. We're going to find out a little bit about them and some of the conservation efforts that he has actually partaken in uh, helping these animals out in the wild. So stick around, we'll see you on the other side. A good portion of my life has been all about action, which still holds true. But now I pour all that time and energy into wildlife conservation education, and the pursuit of knowledge. This is Camp Kenner. All right, so guys, it's no, no secret that I, I have been here many times before, but I wanted to show some of my viewers uh, why this place holds a special place in my heart. And Paul, really got a lot of respect for you because just past, what was it, this past uh, June? summer, yeah. yeah, he actually partaked in a rescue operation for the first animal we're going to see here. They are? This is the Philippine pond turtle or the Palawan uh, forest turtle. And this is a... Um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's hiding. He, yeah, he was, he was right here a second ago. Um, so this is, this is a species where we thought there were maybe 2,000, 2,500 left in the wild. And then last year, we got an email that said they found 3,800 of them in a warehouse in southern Palawan. No way. So turtle, the turtle community got together, the TSA, uh, Turtle Conservancy, uh, Char T Charlie Innes, the yeah. um, TTPG, I yeah, think, helped TTPG out. TTPG helped out. A lot, lot of turtle organizations all helped out. And we all went to Palawan to help because this, this massive number of turtles and the directive from the IUCN, the Turtle and Tortoise Specialist Group, yep. was to put the turtles back in the wild. Okay. So within a few days, we had um, over a thousand of them back. By the time I left, 10 days later, we had um, something like 3,000 of them that we had placed back in the wild. You know, I was actually at one of the TTPG meetings this past year, and they actually had a story about what went down, and I saw what they had to go through. Now, remember, you're in you know a country that doesn't have a lot of resources, and they had to build holding ponds, and they really did a fantastic job, but it was definitely around-the-clock work. So uh, we'll, we'll try and uh, see one of those in a little bit. Get her yeah. back. Yeah, no worries, man. <laughs> but here's, I want to kind of bug you a little bit because one of my bucket list tortoises happens to be over here. And um, they are just one of the most endangered tortoise species as well. These are, are these, these are no, are these still extinct in the wild? The, the story on these is that the wild population reached a point where there weren't enough left to find each other anymore to mate. Oh, man. So th this is a, a determination that's not, um, it's not one of the official IUCN determinations, but we call them functionally extinct in the wild, or biologically extinct in the wild. Gotcha, because so, they're not reproducing. Yeah, there's no yeah. way that there were enough left to be able to sustain the wild population. And I should note that this is the Burmese star tortoise. So you have the Indian star tortoise, you have the Sri Lankan star tortoise, and this species is uh, from Southeast Asia, what is now Myanmar. Um, and I just love them because, you know, for me personally, where I live, uh, it's this species does better than some of the other Sri Lankan or the Indian. Mm -hmm. um, these just seem to be uh, a hardier uh, species of the star tortoise. Yeah, the, yeah. as tortoises go, most tortoises are, are pretty adaptable and mm -hmm. people can keep a lot of different tortoise species without too much trouble, but the star tortoises are known for, for being more difficult. Right. Definitely the, the Indian and the Sri Lankan are more difficult than Burmese stars, but this is still not a beginner's tortoise. Oh, absolutely not. They're, they're, they're still, uh, they require a lot of heat, they require intense basking sites, their um, seasonality is 
very dry in the cool season and um, and extremely wet during the wet season. Gotcha. So they, they and you've some... actually been to Myanmar? I have. Okay. So that I mean just just that alone, you know, really gives you a wealth of knowledge that most other people and keepers don't really have. So it's very important, you know, if you're really passionate about these animals, you know, yeah. get involved. Yeah. Um, and I just want to point something out. So come on down here, guys, and have a look at the uh, the garage, <laughs> if you will, of Platinoida. That's the Latin name of the Burmese star tortoise. That is just incredible. And they have some amazing outdoor enclosures as well. Oh, yeah. You know, this, weather permitting, they, they got a lot of space. This is wintertime, so they right. sleep inside at night. Yes. Awesome. Well, I'm going to pull me away from these okay. guys because <laughs> you, you know I'm a pain in the neck, Paul. Let's go look at some Raleigh Islands. So we are now going to look at one of the uh, rare snake necks. And I love snake necks. And you have a very, a very gentle touch there, Paul. That was good, good turtle catching, man. Um, so this, oh, I just love the eyes right. on them. Yeah. I mean, that's the most striking feature, you know, this, this beautiful ring around their, their eye. Um, so, you know, talk to me about these guys because I actually don't know much about them. I'm imagining that they're somewhere in Indonesia or I I'm really not even sure where they come from. Well, the island that they come from, Roti. Roti, okay. Yeah. That, there you go. There's a, on one end of that island, there's, uh, the population was discovered, I think it was around 15, maybe 18 years ago. And as soon as the, the discovery was published in the scientific literature, the population was poached out. So this is this is a species that was described by Anders Rodin. He's, he's our chairman of the board, right? And it was one of those lessons about how we have to be very careful with site data and and when when people are describing new species, it's just classic traditionally to tell exactly where that species right. comes from. But in this day and age, with you know with China being. Uh more disposable income there and what happens is they start grabbing these animals for pets in, in a lot of cases That's right. um, so you know unfortunately we don't have any more left in the wild and when you're talking about an insular species I mean that's disastrous because they're found only on this one island so yeah. uh, and we know that turtles and tortoises don't always have the best luck uh, with reproductive numbers, you know, to no, begin with. No, right. They, these, these ones re reach reproductive age at a relatively young age. This, these were hatched at the uh, Los Angeles Zoo, no. and they're about five years old. And the female, we, can, we palpated eggs. She has eggs in it. Oh, fantastic. So they're, they're going to be adults and hopefully reproducing by age um, five to six. Okay. So that, that's good news for them. Okay, and they are side neck species, guys, and I've said this on and on, whether they're short necks or long necks, only side necks are found in the southern hemisphere. So they're, they're found south on the equator or south, uh, and that's where you get the side neck where they pull their head into the side. And then one more thing that I think is interesting, Paul, if you would show them the plastron, and they're the only, the, 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 the snake necks are the only ones to have the, what is it called, the intra uh scoot right there? This one. Yeah, that scoot right there. That, that's the only turtle species, or that group of turtles, are the only ones that have this little segment there. And I didn't touch it, so don't worry. <laughs> I, I didn't touch it. You, know, I was you close. mentioned the eyes, and, and I, I, one of the things about their eyes that's striking to me is that they can either look towards the side or they can use binocular vision really? to look towards the front. So if you, if you look at them head uh -huh. on, yeah, they can it, focus on you. Yeah, it, it helps them to be able to catch fish. I would imagine so, definitely. And that long neck is certainly not hurting them either to That's do that. Right. So they can focus in on something, and uh, they're really intense feeders. Yeah. So incredible. All right, well, you know what, Paul? We are officially going to get out of your hair. You got a lot of work to do here at the Turtle Conservancy, and thanks again for spending some time with us and uh, the viewers at Camp Kennan and opening the doors. Uh, it's time now for us to go. We're going to grab something to eat. We're going to let this gentleman go home to his lovely wife. All right. See you soon. Thanks, Kennan. You got it, bro.